join our free WhatsApp group to get daily latest updates. It's totally free. Part 1 First you have some time to look at questions 1 through 5. School of Architecture, Professor Burt's office. Oh, good morning. I was wondering if you could give me some information about the forthcoming Architecture 21 conference. Uh, dates, enrolment procedures, costs, that sort of thing. Uh-huh. Well, the conference runs from the 18th to the 20th of October. 18th to the 20th of October. Oh, good. I'll still be here then. And, um, where exactly is it being held? Is it at the university, as in previous years? No. It's actually being held at the Pacific Hotel. We've rather outgrown the university conference facilities, so we've opted for this new venue. Right. Paradise Hotel. No. The Pacific? That's P-A-C-I-F-I-C. Oh, right. And presumably we can get accommodation at the hotel? Yes, but you'll need to contact them direct to arrange that. I'll give you the number for hotel reservations. Have you got a pen ready? Yes, go ahead. It's area code 07 and then 9333266. And what's the registration fee? Individual fees are $300 for the three days or $120 a day if you only want to attend for one day. Are there any student concessions? There's a 50% concession for students, so that's $150 for the three days, or $60 a day. And am I too late to offer to give a talk? Oh, I'm pretty sure you've missed the deadline for that. Oh, really? But I've only just arrived here in Australia... Is there any way I could have a paper accepted? Well, you'd need to talk to Professor Burt, uh, the conference organiser. I can put you through if you like. That'd be great. Oh, and can I just check the spelling of his name? Is that B-U-R-T? Yes, that's correct. You have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. Professor Burt speaking. Oh, hello. My name's John Helston. I'm an architecture student at London University. I'm here in Australia for three months looking at energy-saving house designs. Right. I'm interested in giving a talk on my research at the conference, but I believe I may have missed the deadline. Well, strictly speaking, you have. The closing date was last Friday. Oh, no. But we may be able to include your paper if it fits into our program, but you'll have to be quick. OK. What do I need to do? Send me a summary of your talk, and make sure you include an interesting title for the talk, something to attract people's attention. OK. Interesting title. Right. I'm looking at ways of designing buildings for tropical climates that don't rely on the need to include air conditioning, so I'm sure I can come up with something. Yes, quite. But remember, the outline should be no more than 300 words. Right. I'll try to keep it down to 300 words, but would 400 be OK? No, not really, because we have to print it in the proceedings and we just don't have the space. Sure. I understand. And also, can you send me a short CV, the usual stuff, name, age, qualifications, that sort of thing? Right. OK. Uh, short CV. Actually, you can email it to me. That'd be quicker. Sure. Uh, what's your email address? 
Well, the best thing would be to send it to the conference administrative officer at info, that's I-N-F-O, at uniconf.edu.au. Right. I'll do that straight away. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully to the short introductory talk and answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Apsley House. My name's Henry James, and I'm the proprietor of this, I must say, wonderful old house. My staff and I will do all that we can to ensure that your stay here at Apsley House is both informative and relaxing. If you look at the schedule I've prepared, you will see that we have planned a number of different activities for you. But what I'd like to do today is to introduce the house to you. So let's first deal with the history of the house. Apsley House is known as one of the finest houses in England. It was originally designed and constructed by the Scottish-born architect Robert Adam between the years 1771 and 1778, and from day one was the office of the Duke of Wellington. Back then it was a private house, but in 1987 it opened to the public for the first time. The Duke of Wellington was an avid collector of art, and if you look to the room to your left... Can everyone see that all right? Yes? Good. You will see a rather large art gallery. The viewing gallery is 90 feet long and houses a wide range of art from all over Europe. Until recently, the gallery was closed to the public, but I'm pleased to say that it is now open and you are free to visit any time you wish. If you take a look at the schedule, you will see that I'll be talking to you about the gallery tomorrow after breakfast, so if you're interested in art, please be here by 9 o'clock for the talk. You now have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the short introductory talk and answer questions 16 to 20. This room here, to your right, is the cafeteria. Breakfast is served from 7.30 to 8.30 a.m., although you can request breakfast in your room if you prefer. The dining hall serves a traditional English breakfast, although vegetarian food is available on request. Just let the kitchen staff know the previous evening. Outside you will find a magnificent garden. A section of the garden was converted into a car park in 1990 to make way for the growing number of visitors. Nevertheless, much of it remains and is an ideal place for you to wander and enjoy the peace and quiet or simply sit and read. There are a lot of animals in the garden, including birds, squirrels, rabbits, oh, and not to forget Felix the cat. Now don't be alarmed if the animals come up to you. They are used to people and very friendly. Anyway, dinner will be served at seven, so in the meantime, please feel free to simply wander and enjoy the hospitality Apsley House has to offer. You will now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part three. You will hear two students, Anna and Chris, talking about postgraduate courses in music. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Hi, Chris. What are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be revising for your finals in the library. Yeah. Well, I decided it was time for a break. I really wasn't being very productive, so thought I'd come and have a coffee and some fresh air to see if that'd help. Oh,、uh, what are you doing with all those prospectuses? Well, I'm trying to decide which university to apply to for my MA in music.、Oh. The choice is really overwhelming. Well, that certainly is a big pile of prospectuses. <laughs> Maybe talking about it will help you at least narrow it down. I've got some time, and to be honest, it'll be a welcome distraction from my dissertation. Great, thanks, Chris. So far, the universities that appeal the most are the Academy in London, Leeds Conservatory of Contemporary Music, and the Henry Music Institute, which is also in London.、Mm, I'm not an expert, but wouldn't the Henry Music Institute be the best, as it's the one that everyone's heard of? Well, yes and no. Leeds Conservatory of Contemporary Music is also pretty famous.、Mm. And although the academy in London is less well known, they've got some excellent modules on offer. But still, it's always good to have a well-known name on your CV, even if Leeds Conservatory of Contemporary Music and the Academy in London are good. What about the entry requirements? That might help you to make a decision. Well, funny you should say that, as I was just looking at them.、Mm. The Academy in London requires an audition, as does the Henry Music Institute. Leeds Conservatory of Contemporary Music doesn't. No, they want candidates to compose a piece of music instead before attending an interview. Don't the others require you to do that? Compose, that is. No, the others ask you to write an assignment stating why you want to join the course first of all. But if I pass that stage, then I'll also have to attend a face-to-face -face interview, like the other two places, with the head of school.、Mm. Assuming that goes okay, then I'll be accepted onto the course. Right. Sounds tough. I know, but I suppose it's for a master's degree, so I wasn't expecting it to be easy.、Mm. What about the fees? Are they all the same? Well, surprisingly, the fee structures are very different. Why is that? I really don't know, but for example, the Henry Music Institute is the most expensive, at eight thousand pounds a year. Next comes the Academy in London, and the cheapest is Leeds Conservatory of Contemporary Music. Hmm, how much are they exactly? Well, for a full-time course lasting one year, it's seven thousand pounds at the Academy in London, and six thousand pounds at Leeds Conservatory of Contemporary Music. Okay. Well, what other expenses do you have to take into consideration, like train fares, for example? If you're going to be travelling home and back during the holidays, that's got to be a factor. I'm not worried about that, though. Insurance is an added cost, as I'll need to make sure my instrument is covered.、Mm. However, all of them require me to send in a cheque for the charges for applying before they'll process my application. Is that normal? Apparently. Can I have a look? Yes, of course. Here you are. Hmm.、Mm. What is it? Well, I think you might have a problem. Why? What is it? Well, it says here that the deadline is January the ninth, 
That's next week. Where? Let me see. Oh, you're right. Which prospectus is this? The Henry Music Institute. Oh no! What am I going to do? <laughs> Make your decision now. Is the closing date the same for all of them? Uh, let's check.、Uh... Ah, look here, Leeds Conservatory of Contemporary Music is on the nineteenth, but the Academy in London isn't until the thirtieth of this month. Okay, I'd better hurry up and make a decision. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. Right. Now, apart from those three colleges, I also wanted to have a quick flick through North Down Colleges and the one from the James Academy of Music.、Hmm. Uh, look, here it is. Facilities at North Down College. What does it say? Well, it has a library with a dedicated historical research section that's、Ooh. world famous. That's all very interesting, but it's not going to make me go there. Okay, the academy in London has four campuses all around central London. They all have large common rooms, and there's one twenty-four hour cafeteria at the biggest site. That's nice, but for me, the most important thing is somewhere to practice. Yes, of course. Right now, where did I see it? Okay, here it is. Look, now this is good.、Mm -hmm. Leeds Conservatory of Contemporary Music has over one hundred teaching and practice studios. What a luxury! Here there are only ten, and it's really difficult to find one empty. So I often have to play in the gardens. Oh dear! <laughs> anyway, that's the past, and this place looks great. Well, what about the Henry Music Institute? Look, there's a new suite with the latest that technology has to offer,、mm. and a small museum dedicated to the history of music. That's really impressive.、Mm, I don't think I'm really that interested in using computers while making music, so that's not a selling point, really.、Hmm. But look, this place is interesting. The James Academy of Music. It comes recommended by lots of people in the music industry, and all of its courses have a business element, as well as having a professional studio for recording albums. Wow. That sounds really cutting edge. So, are you any closer to making a decision now? You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You will hear part of a student presentation on how music and art are used in the healing process. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Hello everyone. Before we continue with our lectures on the history of music and art, we'll be listening to Michael's presentation on how music and art are being used to help with the healing process in the 21st century. Michael, are you ready to begin? Uh, yes, I think so. Thanks, Professor. Right, uh, good morning all. As Professor McKinley just stated, I've been doing some research into the healing powers of art and music, and I'd like to present my findings to you today. I intend to demonstrate the positive effects of music and art on patients' emotional, social, as well as physical well-being. Let's begin by going back in time to the most famous of nurses, Florence Nightingale. Way back in 1860, Florence Nightingale wrote in her Notes on Nursing that brightly coloured flowers and art helped her patients to recover more quickly. Although her comments were viewed with scepticism at the time, she was, we believe, the first of many health professionals to state this. Over the following years, there were many other studies that tried to prove that a link between art, music and health exists, but very few of them were strictly controlled, so the results were variable and therefore unreliable. However, one American study was different. In the 1980s, some research took place into the effect of architecture on the recovery time of 46 patients who were in hospital for a gallbladder operation. Half of the patients were kept in hospital wards with windows overlooking some trees. The other half were left in rooms that faced onto a brick wall. It was found that the ones with a nice view left hospital a day earlier and needed fewer painkillers. This study was groundbreaking as it was the first that used controlled conditions that could be measured statistically and without bias. Now I'd like to bring you up to date and take a closer comparative look at three research projects on three very different types of patient. The first monitored the health of unborn babies. In the study which took place at a hospital in London, babies were played live music and their heart rates were monitored. A healthy baby's heart would beat around 110 to 160 times a minute but researchers found that their heart rate increased by up to 15 beats a minute on average without the mother's pulse changing. This is a good sign that the baby is healthy. In addition, the mothers that took part in the survey also said they felt more relaxed. Another study looked at cancer patients who were visiting as day patients to receive their chemotherapy treatments. They were treated in a room that had artistic pictures hanging on the wall. The pictures were changed each week so that the patients would not have to look at the same ones week after week. When questioned afterwards, patients said that they felt less pain because the images helped take their mind off the treatment they were receiving. They also noted general improvements in their well-being. Finally, the last study analysed the treatment of a group of elderly patients who were in hospital to have a hip replacement operation, and so they needed to stay for around 10 to 14 days. The researchers played them 30-minute tracks of soothing classical music, but not every day, and then monitored their progress using a questionnaire. When asked to rate how they felt both with and without music, the patients consistently stated 
that they felt less anxious on the days when they had the music playing. There was a second, unexpected but completely understandable result from the research. The staff liked the music so much that they said they too felt happier, and that they would be less likely to leave the hospital for a job elsewhere if it were to continue. Now that has to be a good thing, which will also have a positive effect on the quality of the treatment patients receive. In conclusion, I'd like to bring to your. You now have half a minute to check your answers.